Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Maltico podcast. I am Mario Rojas and today joining us is Ray. How are you doing, uh, Ray? Uh, good. I'm waking up, but I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it there? Uh, it's nine. Normal people are awake by now, but yeah, no, but I, I, I do. I do the nights and then the, the mornings are harder. Yeah, no, it's still early. Uh, it's just for us. It's almost the end of the day. Uh, it's four p.m. Yeah, so it's it's the end of the day. Yeah, it's nice. It's always nice to reach the day. Okay, ready to get out for the weekend. <laughs> yeah, well, it's getting cold here, so and it's my first winter, so it's going to be fun. Let's see if I, oh. hope I don't freeze to death. Or yeah, something. where are you at? I'm in Munich. Uh, oh yes. But I'm I am Munich. from yeah, I'm from Costa Rica, so I've never experienced cold like that so <laughs> and Munich is cold when I was there it was Christmas it was over Christmas the last time and it was cold it was very cold <laughs> yeah it can be so uh, well thank you and, and welcome to, to the podcast uh, I wanted to, to uh, say that thank you I know that you are pretty busy and that you have a lot of things going on in your life uh, but um, I wanted to say do you, would you like to tell us something a little bit about yourself yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I enjoy being here. I like doing podcasts and, and I guess talking about myself. <laughs> no, it's always awkward to talk about yourself. Um, I, I am relatively new to, to OSINT and cybersecurity in general. Um, I've, I've probably only been in the field for about two, two and a half years now. Um, I switched from graphic design. So I was doing graphic design for about 15 years. Um, I was a graphic design manager. I, I like art directed. Um, but as I'm sure you know, art does not make as much money as tech does. <laughs> so that was that was a big motivator. And I was just kind of, I was sick of doing the same things over and over again. And I kind of felt when I went through school the first time that I didn't put a lot of effort into it. Um, I, I skipped a lot of school. I didn't show up. Uh, I had better things to do when I was young. Uh, so I, I decided to go back to school. And when I made that decision, I was like, if I'm going to spend this money, I'm going to go all in. So I started going back to school at Penn State for cybersecurity. Um, and I just started writing blogs and doing talks and, and putting myself out there. Uh, I had all this marketing background. So I was trying to use that because I know social media marketing and, and some of that from just design and working with marketers. Um, and I, I think that helped a little bit. Um, but that's kind of why I switched. And it's been very fun since now I now I work in consulting um, at a large consulting firm doing OSINT all day. So it's fantastic. It's pretty interesting. And I know you touched on this a, a little bit. Um, so you, you said you switched from graphic design into cybersecurity, but what drew you into OSINT specifically? Yeah, so I had never heard of OSINT. <laughs> I had no idea what it is. Uh, I, I knew that I enjoyed true crime. Um, I've done a few talks on true crime. Um, I, I keep a spreadsheet of everything I've ever watched or listened to relating to true crime. So, you know, I always... I. I could never be a cop or a detective. I just don't have it in me, but I am very interested in it. So like, I would love to do investigations. And I went to the Layer 8 conference two years ago um, in Rhode Island, and they just had another one last week. Um, and they were doing a Trace Labs event, which Trace Labs, you find missing people using OSINT. It's like a game, um, you get points for every piece of information you find, and then they send it to um, law enforcement at the end. So my, I went with a Penn State team and they were like, you gotta play this game. It sounds so fun. And I was like, okay. So I did it and I was like, this is great. This is a, such a mix of like everything I love in that world, the true crime world, the, the investigation, and then all the cybersecurity stuff that I'm learning and enjoy. And it just like came together and it was perfect. That's wonderful. <laughs> it's a pretty great story. Um, let me see. Um, so 
that's what drew you into Austin. So is that what is keeping you in the field or do you still do uh, that kind of uh, activity with Trace Labs or? Uh, yes, I, I do. I've judged, I've played in their competitions. So I don't even know how many times now. Um, I won my team and I won the, the black badge at DEF oh, CON nice. this year. So that was the first place badge. And now I'm kind of bowing out a little. Um, just because I played so many, I'm taking a break. But uh, so we help, I help out on the back end with that sometimes. I help make the con contesting guide. Um, and then in my work life, I do investigations and then personal life on the side, I do them for fun, just kind of as they show up. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, so uh, just moving a little bit forward, um, how do you pick your, your research topics? Um, I know this is something that people struggle with or people that are trying to get into uh, Allison, for example, they struggle with. Uh, how do you pick those topics? Yeah, so I pick them based on what is sounds interesting to me. Like if you if you go online and you look around, you'll find a scam. I mean, it's not very hard to find a scam <laughs> to follow if you're into that kind of investigation. I mean, I get how many phishing texts a day that I could investigate. Um, and then once I started writing blogs, people come to me with, with stuff. So often I'll get an email or a text or I have kind of a group on uh, Discord, the OSIN Curious Discord. Um, we have like a side group where we do investigate, like we trust each other. So we share, we share our little <laughs> fun things to investigate and then we do it as a group. Um, so, so sometimes I just happen upon them. Other times I go looking, but um, I just... It doesn't have to be big, like something big. I just kind of, if it's interesting to me and I feel like I can put hours into looking at it, then I will go go forward. Perfect. Yeah. And now that you mentioned your or your blog, so what's up with uh, the Wondersmith Ray? Uh, it's very angsty MySpace. <laughs> I think. <laughs> um, so so Wondersmith, it's from a song. Um, from Astronautilus, his song is uh, Wondersmith and His Sons. And it's, it's kind of about this, this con man who um, charms people into giving him like what he wants and what he needs. And he screws over a bunch of people. But it's, it resonated with like social engineering and OSINT at the time when I was making my account. So I just, that's what I'm, <laughs> it's nothing <laughs> mind blowing, but, but that, there it is. Well, it's a, it's a nice catchy name, right? It's cool. <laughs> I tried for the Wondersmith, but that was taken, so I had to add Ray at the end. It happens. <laughs> um, so could, could you please uh, maybe tell us a little bit of uh, maybe a recent uh, investigation that they did or a, a recent uh, topic that you dived into, Chris? Yeah, so a lot of a lot of the stuff that I look into, I, I can't talk about just because of the nature of industry but uh the last one that i actually did kind of publicly is uh, a puppy scam and I, I feel like i always fall back to this one in in like interviews and stuff but it's so big and prolific that it's very exciting to me um me and a few other people started looking into this woman who is she's selling fake dogs online for like 10 tens of thousands of dollars and when you, you put like a down payment, you go to the airport to get it and it's not actually there, there's no dog. Um, so she does that, she runs credit card scams, um, all kinds of scams. Uh, she's in Canada and I kind of have, I, I did an initial investigation, I wrote a blog um, and that was like a year ago and I kind of just keep up on where she is. People mm -hmm. send me tips, people send me, I have an email set up where people just send me stuff. And it's this ongoing like beast. I call her my white whale because like, I feel like I'm going to catch her, um, <laughs> but I have not yet. Well, it would be great. Um, <laughs> and I can see why people can kind of try to fall back into this topic. It's because really, it's really interesting. It's something that you don't think about happening, right? In the, the real world. And it's touching. Yeah, and, 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 and you talked about finding, finding stuff. This was like completely happenstance. Um, we were looking for something to investigate. I had seen um, a news story about people who run puppy mills um, when they can't 
sell the dog for full price, they'll pretend it's a rescue dog and they'll knock down the price to like $300 and they'll be like, oh, we found this dog. We fixed it here. Take it for this discount. So they're still making money. And that's what I was going to look into. And then as we were looking, we kept seeing her name come up over and over. And we're like, this is kind of big. What is this? <laughs> yeah, it's a, such an interesting topic. Um, so um, I think uh, we read or, uh, or it was mentioned by uh, Carl at the beginning that you are diving a little bit into maritime housing research. Oh, and yes talk a little bit about that that's a, such an interesting topic as well yeah that also I guess a lot of my career in OSIN has been kind of happenstance and and just being in the right place at the right time doing something random um so I I was looking for something to write about that maybe a lot of people haven't written about um and I came across the maritime blog and I started researching it and so I put out a blog about maritime OSINT, just some techniques for researching it. And it kind of took off and people were pretty interested about it. And I was, I was confused because it seemed like people had already done it. Like it was, I was just trying to follow on and teach myself how to do it. Um, and then, so I started writing more and giving talks and like researching it. And now I, I'm like the maritime OSINT person. People come to me with maritime questions. It's very weird. Um, but I'm I'm here for it. I'm very interested in in maritime stuff. I track ships all day long. It's very and, exciting. What are you trying to find out about the chips, for example? Um, I, I think a lot of people don't realize how how the sea is such an open crime area. <laughs> like people just kind of do what they want out there. Uh, so I I look a lot for like people transferring oil illegally to get around sanctions, um, smuggling, um, just kind of watching how ships are interacting, how they're moving. Um, and then we have events like the Ever Given that's stuck and I kind of monitor those things. Um, I watch Russia a lot because of the Northern Sea Route. I watch China, you know, all those hotspot areas because there's a lot going on there and a lot of it is maritime based. Yeah, I, I guess uh you don't hear very often about this kind of uh, criminal activities and uh, this, it sounds so interesting. Uh, I will definitely yeah. read more on that on your blog for sure. There, uh, it, Yeah, there's a lot of it. I mean, ships don't really report who they are half the time. They turn off their, their satellite and they go do their criminal activity and then they flip it back on. So you don't know what they've done in that period. They could, I don't know, be smuggling 40 humans across. Yeah. You know, of course. Across the and sea. What kind of tools do you use for this type of investigations? Um, so I use a lot of free tools. I'm hoping that someone will give me a non-free tool <laughs> that I can use. But um, so I use Vessel Finder, um, uh, marine traffic, things like that. They have free access where you can track them in real time. So what is happening now with ships? Um, the problem is you hit a paywall where if you want to see the history of where a ship's been, and that's a lot of the investigation, um, you have to pay for that. So a lot of it is piecing it together between, you know, social media. So you can go to Twitter and you can see there's people who monitor areas. So there might be somebody who's monitoring Russia. And then I follow all those people on Twitter and watch what they post. So they might be at a port taking pictures every day of the ships that are coming in. That's their thing. Um, and then somebody else might watch, you know, post satellite pictures. So now I have satellite pictures I don't have to pay for. I see them, you know, you still have to verify that they're they're actually real and what they're saying. But once you put all that together, you can get kind of a, a larger picture of what's going on without going past the paywall. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And uh, just talking about uh, resources and tools. Uh, what are some good resources, of course, besides your blog post, which is amazing? For uh, OSIN in general? Yes. Um, well, I would be remiss if I didn't mention OSIN Curious, um, I'm, but I'm I'm on the executive board, so. Uh, it's still a, it's a great resource, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we put yes. out, we do live streams, we put out blogs, um, yeah. we used to give talks when there were in-person talks. Um, 
each of the members give talks and do the, have their own little section of things that they do like terrorism and maritime. Mm -hmm. um, if you're looking for training, Joe Gray has some great training um, at the Ascension, um, just playing in Trace Labs events. Um, if you're looking to learn how to pivot through OSINT things, um, playing in Trace Labs is great because it kind of incentivizes you to like actually sit down for hours and work with other people and figure out what, what you're doing and how to do it. Yeah, that's definitely great. And yeah, I, I do agree with the housing Curtis of being a great resource. Uh, uh, I think for me, trying to get into this uh, field in the past, it was a really amazing resource. And the great thing is that they offer everything or most, I don't know if they they have anything that is paid now, but mm -hmm. the time I was getting into it, it was all free, which is all amazing. Free. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. I think I think a lot of times when you're when you're looking around, if you're new, you can be overwhelmed. Like this thing costs ten thousand dollars. I don't have that. <laughs> How am I ever going to learn OSINT? But you know, if you go on Twitter and you follow OSINT people there, people are posting talks, they're posting tips. Um, OSINT curious, you have your videos, walkthroughs, how to do it, and then you just kind of have to sit down and try it. Yeah. And um, I talk about your, your blog post a couple of times, but um, it's, it's just that it's so, so good. Um, what would you tell a person that is trying to get or start writing as well? Um, I know that a lot of us struggle with this as well. But you mentioned how to come up with the topics, but about writing itself, it's, what would you recommend? <laughs> Yeah, I, and I actually hear this a lot. People want to write blogs, but they don't know where to start. Yeah. I mean, uh, being honest, half the time, I have no idea what, what I'm doing. So when I'm writing a blog, I, I'm writing something that I'm trying to learn. So I figure if I'm, I can write it down, it makes sense. I've taught myself, then you know, it might be useful for somebody else. So that was the, the main point of my blog was to learn because I had to then know enough to write a blog about it. Um, the topics themselves are generally just things I'm interested in. Like if I see an article come out on something and I'm like, I have no idea what's happening here. I, and so I write a blog on it so I can teach myself. And that's just kind of how I learn by like doing and then showing, being able to show somebody else. Um, but I wouldn't get hung up on um, somebody else has written this or, you know, this is not new um, because even if somebody has written about the topic 500 times, your take on it is different than my take on it. So it's still valuable to people and it's still valuable, you know, for you to write. So, so true. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you. And um, just sort of as a final question, could you share three of the most important things that you have or that have helped you uh, on the, or sorry, let me reformulate that. Can you, could you share three of the most important things that have helped you and that every awesome practitioner should keep in mind of? Uh, three, okay. <laughs> so, um, from a new to OSINT, new to cybersecurity perspective, um, and it sounds lame, but networking, 100% networking, go to talks, talk to people, make friends, write blogs, uh, network. Because honestly, like most of what I have right now, what I'm doing is because of people I've met while networking and opportunities that I've gained. So definitely networking, do not overlook that. Um, personal branding. So you online, you're a brand. I mean, if you want people to know who you are, you gotta brand yourself. You have to have a consistent message. You have to uh, maybe pick a niche topic like maritime or whatever it happens to be. Um, stay in that lane, figure out who you are, what your voice is and, and run with it and stay in there and people will know who you are. They'll know who to come to for certain things. And that's important. I mean, you're, you're basically advertising yourself for a job. <laughs> um, and then I would say a passion for the industry as a whole, because, you know, 
I can teach you how to use Maltigo. I can teach you how to do OSINT and pivot through things. But if you don't feel like you have a passion for it, um, people won't hire you. They won't be interested in what you're doing because you're not. You know? yeah. And and that's something like I know a lot of people hire based more on passion for what you're doing over the actual skills you have. So definitely don't get hung up on, I don't know all the things. Um, if you want to know all the things, that that still counts. Yeah, that's that's amazing and it's uh, so relevant. Uh, so thank you for that. Yep. And uh, well, that actually brings us to the end of the podcast. Uh, this one was, was a pretty quick one, uh, oh, but awesome. really, really interesting one and really informative. <laughs> um, actually, just uh, aching, no, not aching, but I really want to go now and check into <laughs> that maritime stuff. It sounds so interesting. <laughs> thank you Please, so much. Yeah. I just did a talk <laughs> at Layer 8 um, last Friday. Yeah. So a week ago on. Um, the ever given being stuck. It was like a supply chain um, overview, how we, we as OSINT analysts can, can try and predict that stuff and monitor it. So. Well, then I'll go and check that one then as yeah, well. Please, <laughs> let me know Thank if you, you like it. <laughs> uh, for sure I will. I have uh, been lurking around your blog post for a while so, <laughs> and I like it, so I'm pretty sure I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I wrote a blog about um, Maltigo, that was one of my first first blogs that I wrote. And I see all the time people, I mean, it was ran, completely random. I wanted to learn how to use Maltigo. So again, I figured write a blog about it, I'll be forced to learn it. Um, and since I posted that, it was like a beginner's guide to using Maltigo. I see like people sharing it over and over and over. I'm like, why are, why are people sharing this? This seems like so, I just, I feel like I threw it together to teach myself and it's been very valuable to people. So, I mean, I thank everyone for reading it, but it's very surprising to me. So I'm glad that I've been able to provide something. Yeah, and I think it's uh, really helpful because you write it as you're trying to learn as well. So that's what most of us are trying to do sometimes. And for me personally, sometimes I find blog posts about a particular tool, but it's written in a really technical way that you end up not learn, learning or understanding anything. So I guess that's actually what makes it your blog post more relevant. Yeah, and that's intentional. I, I hate when I read a blog post or watch a talk and it sounds like the person is just trying to be smart, like prove that they're smart and they know how to do it. Um, I don't know everything. I don't, I don't claim to know much of anything. So I, I'm my, I'm, when I'm writing, it's purely to like show how to do something. I may not know how to do it before I wrote the blog. Like in all honesty, I may have never touched the thing before I wrote a blog about it. So I'm uh, hopefully that's helpful. Um, I've heard that a few times that it's written like that. And it yeah, is, it is good. definitely that's my intention. Yeah, it is definitely helpful. And I think that's what keeps our uh, the OSINT community moving forward uh, because in cybersecurity, for example, we, we get uh, to see a lot of people just charging uh, crazy amounts of uh, money for training and for just regular white papers and stuff like that. And as we just talked before, briefly before, uh, being able to share this with the community is what keeps mm -hmm. us moving, right? Is what keeps uh, the community alive and is going to yeah. help our or uh, I don't know, our jobs in the future as well, I guess. <laughs> right, yeah. And, and and if you're just coming into OSINT, which a lot of people are because it's it's fairly new and like growing very fast, like it's very intimidating because you see all these people who seem like they've been doing it for years and they know everything about everything and they're writing like they, you know, have all this experience. But I mean, the amount of stuff that I've learned in a year is incredible mm -hmm. so like don't doubt yourself because in a year you'll know a whole lot of stuff <laughs> like just keep going don't be intimidated by all these other people use them as a resource um, and another thing i would suggest is if you want to get into blogging and talking and kind of creating your brand find somebody who does what you want to do like if there's somebody who gives talks like you want to do or, you know, is into an area that you find very interesting and you like how they present it, um, just emulate them. I mean, it's not it's not really stealing. You're you're using them to learn. Yeah. Um, and I, I do this all the time. So <laughs> yeah. I, I highly suggest kind of emulating people that you admire. 
Yes, and I think I like, uh, one of the greatest things about uh, people, I don't know, mainly in OSINT actually, is that uh, when they present, they're, uh, they're really trying to teach people. So I don't, I don't feel that they're going to be offended if you try to uh, emulate them. So yeah, yeah. that's one of the greatest things. But but things change so fast in in oh, so like tools go down tools come up like it's yeah. a lot the when you're starting to like get a hold of but i mean if you if you get the basics down tools come and go it's if you if you know how to investigate something that's what matters yeah and then that, just touching back on tools uh, you mentioned this before as well about the, the pay tools and the free tools uh do you feel like you that you struggle finding free tools available for for your investigations, for example? Um, so I'm a I'm fairly tool agnostic and I I always people get mad because I say that Google is is what I use the most, but honestly, like hundred percent honesty, I usually go to Google first, um, exhaust that and and then start moving into paid stuff or you know Python tools or things that are more complicated because a lot of times stuff is just out there. It's so easy to find and people don't think about it. Um, so don't think that you're not a good investigator if you are just using Google because you can formulate your searches in a way to find documents or files. And sometimes you can find very important stuff just like that. Um, I do use paid tools sometimes. I get a lot through, you know, work and stuff, but I don't use those personally. Personally, on on my own investigations, I don't really have many free tools or uh, paid tools. So I'm using all free tools generally, or free versions of paid tools. Um, and you just make it work. If you're missing something in in that, you supplement it with something else. I mean, there's information's out there. You'll find something. That was good, yeah. And I think that at one point that you touched, uh, so you mentioned about uh, Google. I think these uh, Google searches are actually like the base of us, right? I think that's where, where, how we started, just finding stuff uh, publicly available, either uh, uh, either published by companies itself or just published by regular people, yeah. right? So yeah, that's a really good point to touch on. Right. Well, this has been amazing, right? Thank you so much. Yeah, Thanks for no, your time. thank you for having me. And by nice. the way, I love your, I love uh, Nick Cage. Just for the one minute <laughs> oh, yeah. in the background. <laughs> yeah, I always have him. I, I just moved, so it's very bare behind me, but, but I had to include my, oh, I'm sorry. I had to include uh, Nicholas Cage. That's pretty fun, pretty much. <laughs> and it's been pretty amazing. Thank you so much, Ray. Yeah, no. Thank you for taking the thank time. Thank you for it's having me. Right. Have a great right. day. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.